So here we go with the today's lecture of bonding, and, and in particular, it's about the energy change. So my friends in chemistry and my class of period four or five, <laughs> all right, with, is with me today. We're introducing bonding by the energy changes, okay? We have learned that something is exothermic, heat is being released, okay? And we learned when something was endothermic, right, heat was being what? absorbed. But that wasn't the entire story. In every reaction, my friends, in chemistry, there is an endothermic process and an exothermic process. Let me explain. For instance, today's reaction that you just saw, you saw uh, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, become water vapor, okay, and oxygen gas. And let's balance this reaction Okay, we have two H's on this side. We have two H's on this side, but three oxygens. So I, I'm going to throw a two here to give me four H's. Okay, why I do that, it's also going to give me how many oxygens? Four. By throwing a two in front, okay, you can see that now I have, okay, four H's, and then also what? Two oxygens plus two oxygens, everything's balanced. So bo the bottom line here is we have two hydrogen peroxide molecules that look like this, the eyeglass kind of um, molecule, and you have two of them. And what's going to happen, party people, is that they're going to reconform or recombine to make two water molecules and one oxygen molecule. It's double bonded. Now, you're going to learn throughout this unit how to be able to determine these structures. Right now, I'm telling you what they are. Okay, so no problems there, right? Nobody wants to speak because we're live in period what? Four, five? Okay. That was Sarah. She made the video. All right. Any case. So what we're going to do here is change the ink because I can. All right. And uh, we're going to look specifically, my friends in chemistry, at these bonds. Now, it should make sense to you. The reason why things bond is to what party people? Why do things bond? That's right. So my friends, these are stable scenarios. Very stable. So my friends, if I want to recombine and make these guys over here, doesn't it make sense to you that I have to break these bonds? Yeah. Yes, it does. Now, if I'm going to break bonds, do you think that requires energy or releases energy? Right, if you're going to have something that's stable, the reason why these guys are bonding is these elements are using each other to what? Become stable. All right, sharing or transferring. In this case, it's sharing, but we're not getting into that today. So I have a stable state. And if you think with me, okay, we're low energy. If I diagram an energy diagram, we're going to start low. Okay, because I am stable. Now, I'm going to add energy. All right, and I'm going to add, let's go red. And I need energy to break bonds, don't I? So it, it requires energy to break these bonds. So once I break these bonds, okay, I'm going to have free H, free O's, okay, right? Bunch of H's. I don't have to draw them all. I will if I have to. So I have four H's, which is a camp in Riverhead, okay? And I have four O's, all free. So to go from this state of 2H2O2, I had to break these bonds. So energy had to be added to do so. And you should know that atoms that are free are unstable. They don't exist in nature like this because they want to become stable. So I break the bonds. Now, whoa, we make new bonds here. So what's going to happen is these guys are going to recombine and they're going to form new bonds. My friends in chemistry, when you form bonds, are you getting stable or getting further unstable? So that's right. The reason why chemicals bond is to achieve a stable configuration. So the energy is going to go up or go down. Yeah. That's right. Now, my friends in chemistry, the only way for the energy to go down is for energy to be what? Released. So my friends, we absorb energy here, all every chemical reaction we have. If we're breaking bonds initially, 
we have to absorb energy first to break these bonds into the individual atoms. And then when we recombine, we release. So my friends, the question is, pay attention here. Was this reaction exothermic or endothermic that you just saw? Was heat released or absorbed overall? Yeah, because you saw the bottle melt. So we would put the heat, remember this, a couple of months ago? Right here, right? Now this means that heat was released, but what it really means, and you have to get this, there was a net change. What does net mean? Oh, that's right, Frisia. That means we have to consider the energy being absorbed and energy released. So which arrow should be bigger? If this is an overall, the arrow that absorbs or the arrow that releases to form new bonds? Right. So if something is exothermic, party people, it means that the energy being released oops, is greater than the energy being absorbed to break the bonds. I'll say that again. If something is overall exothermic, that means the energy being released has to be greater in, oh gosh, all right, has to be greater, pretty much, has to be greater than the energy absorbed to break the bonds. We need energy to break the bonds to make them free. They recombine to make what? H2O and O2, and then specifically two of these. And let me get rid of this bottom piece here because I didn't prepare myself too well. So this is an energy diagram. We started right here. This was the energy that was in the bonds for the hydrogen peroxide. This is the energy of the products. Can you see that the energy of the products is less? Right. So the difference party people is right here. The difference of where we started and where we finished. Notice we went down. This represents something called delta H. Delta H is called heat of reaction. It's called enthalpy or the change of heat. Change of heat. Delta H is also called enthalpy. Okay, now very simple. This is exothermic. So the delta H is what charge you think? That's right. If something is exothermic, delta H is negative. For I'm sorry, for exothermic. Why? Because the amount of energy being released is greater than the released in forming what compounds than the energy being absorbed to break the bonds. I want you to understand this. If you look at this reaction again. We had to do what? We had to break these bonds first. It needed what? It needed energy. Then once we broke them to make free energy, they had to recombine to form your products. And when they recombine, bonding is a stable state, so energy had to be released. In this case, if it's exothermic, energy released in forming bonds was greater than the energy absorbed to break them. Now, my friends, it's not always that way, is it? We have endothermic reactions. Now, let's pretend I'm a princess, okay, and that was an endothermic reaction. Then I would end up right here, wouldn't I? And notice that delta H in this case would go up and would be positive. Ooh la la. And notice something. Would we say, think with me for a second, is H2O and O2 more stable or less stable than H2O2? More stable. That's right. I don't think there's anything I can add to water to create the reaction you just saw. So clearly hydrogen peroxide is unstable. And clearly water is what? That's the reason why it worked. Now if I created something that was unstable, and we talked about this, creating a bomb, we would be going up in energy and delta H would be positive. So delta H is negative when it's exothermic because you're creating something more stable. That's an energy diagram. So clear this all up. We started here with the H2O2. And we ended up going down in energy to make H2O and water. And you know what? It's a good thing H2O and water are stable. Why? We need water to live. And we need the oxygen to stay together so we can what? Use it for cellular respiration. Okay? Makes sense. Delta H is negative in this case. 
Now, what's the whole purpose of today? Today, my friends, I want to measure delta H by using something called bond energies. What we've done, yes, Ariana. No, because if you remember, free atoms right here, Ariana, are unstable. They already had the energy. Where'd they get that from? The, the energy needed to break them, right? So these guys already have the unstable energy. Think with me for a second. I'm at a party, okay? And let's do the love game for a second, all right? And here's a Grotsky atom. Okay, and here is, uh, gosh, I don't know who I can pick in this example. Okay, um, let's make this Pat. Pat. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so me and Pat are at a party. We're with our friends. We're single. You know single people. They do what? They mingle. They have high energy. They're in over here. Hey, look at me. Hey, look at the stress I have. Hey, look at me. They're all over the place. Ooh, dancing. Dancing hard now. Oh, yeah. Okay, making a scene. I'm single. Okay? They're all over the party. Okay, now, my friends, all of a sudden, G spots P. Eyeball goes up. Ooh. I see you. But, of course, they hide behind their friends. So now you have G, high energy at the party, okay? It kind of excited, okay? And P notices that G's looking at him. Ooh, I don't know what to do here. I'm kind of happy, but I can't look and want, like I, like I want to, I want to, I don't want to show that I need G, okay? So I want to play hard to get. So G does some silly things. Eventually, they break the ice. Okay, and say, hey, how does a nice atom like you do in a place like this? Okay, and eventually they break the ice. Okay, and the, they get over their first date space. We'll leave it at that. Okay, and there's a lot of energy as they get closer. A lot of energy. And then, boom! They bond. And now, my friends, bonding is a... When they bonded, energy was given off. Okay? It was exothermic from this peak, wasn't it? And right here, my friends, they had to add energy to get unstable. So, my friends, bonding is exothermic when you create new bonds always. Now, my, let's stick with me for a second. Why does this work out so well? It works out so well because you know bonded couples. They're not dancing on the bars. They're not... <laughs> Going crazy. See me? See me? See me in your hair? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go over here. Maybe he'll see us if we do this. Okay, you don't do that anymore. You sit in the corner and you're the most boring people at the party. You don't need anybody. You sit by yourselves. What do you guys do when you look bored? I'm married. What do you want? Okay, I have a girlfriend. I have a boyfriend. I have both. Who knows? You have low energy. Okay? So, my friends in chemistry, what if I want to break this couple? and go in reverse, okay? I'm not picking on any person or peoples in here, okay? Uh, now listen, here's my energy diagram. I went up and I went down, same thing. But now I wanna break. This was the energy released when they bonded. I wanna break this couple again. I don't know. Let's say I, st I start a rumor or something. I add energy. Okay, so guess, guess what? The energy it takes to break G and P is the same energy that was released. You with me with that? It's called conservation of energy. If I want to get G and P, what? Back to unstable nuclei. I got to add the same energy that was released. It's called conservation. So my friends in chemistry, there was some geeks on the, uh, that have measured bond energies. They spent all their time measuring bond energies. Yeah? And what they did is they measured how much energy it took to break all bonds. But isn't it the same energy it takes to be released when you form them by conservation of energy? I'll say that again. The energy released when G and P bonded together from free atoms to a married couple is the same energy it takes to break them. If, okay, here's the why. Let's go back to our reaction again. Look, 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 look. Isn't H2O2 unstable? Yeah. And then we make stable compounds? 
So would it make sense if I take a more stable compound and I want to go in the reverse reaction, wouldn't it need the same energy? Right. Now, wouldn't the delta H now become what in the reverse? Right. So if it's delta H, let's pretend I'm a princess and the delta H right here, the difference was a negative 100. What do you think the delta H in reverse is? 100. A positive 100. Right. So I'm telling you, party people, that the energy that, is, that they found to break the bonds is the same energy that's released when you form new bonds. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to pause here for a second for a station identification. So now, listen, we're back on video here. Look at our bond energies. My friends in chemistry, look what this means. This means what? This means that to break an H to O bond, also called a ho bond, you need 463 joules. To break a co bond is 358. So someone broke all these bonds and figured it out. But I want to say this. The energy it takes to break the bond is the same energy released when you form it. It has to be. Yes, Freesia. That's actually kilojoules per mole. Okay? Now notice something. O2 is 495. So, my friends, here we go. Back to where we were. I'm going to pause it for a second go back to where Now, I'm going to delete some stuff here because it's really, really all over the place. But I'm going to, yeah, take my eraser. I don't know why I have to show you that. But, um, okay. But here we go. What we're going to do, my friends, now is we're going to figure out and measure using the bond energy. Someone found these for us. So, here I go. Okay. And, in fact, I'm going to rewrite this because it's really a mess somewhere else on another page. So, here's what I have. I have two. H2O2s, okay, breaking down into what? 2H2O plus an oxygen. Okay, now if you notice, that's the first one on your ditto, <coughs> your bond energy. So, let's go there. Okay, yes, ooh la la. So there we are. I gave it to you balanced, and I gave it to you as the structures. We're going to learn these structures. Okay, now watch. How do you do this? Keep in mind what's happening. We need energy to break the bonds right there. And guess what? Energy to release them. Notice my, my arrow going down is longer because this should be a what? What kind of reaction? Which means my product should be stable and the change, changing the ink so you understand, the change should be negative as I go down. So let's see if we can confirm this, a negative delta H. But I want to come up with the value. So here I go. I want to find this arrow right here. I want to find how much energy it takes to break these bonds. So my friends in chemistry, how many ho bonds do I have? I have two ho bonds for every what? One molecule, right? But there's two molecules. So how many hoes do I have? I have four ho bonds. Okay, watch. <laughs> Here's one ho. Here's the other ho. You see that? Now, because that's two hoes per molecule, and there's two molecules, isn't there four hoes altogether? So four hoes. Okay, now, there's also a what? An O bond. There's an O to O bond, isn't there? But because that's per one molecule, and there's two, there's two. So look what I just did here. I'm surmising all of the bonds. There's two U bonds and four Ho bonds. Collectively, this bracket represents this arrow. Correct? Let's go find it. Okay? So if you go to your table, let's go find some Ho's, okay, on the bond. All right? Now, H-O. <laughs> 463 is where? I have it circled, right. Okay. I'm slow, but I'm tall. 463. All right, so back to here. Uh, where am I? Uh, right, room 230. Okay, so 463. So 4 times 463. Okay, plus, who's going to look up the U bond for me? All right, I'll... 146, which I probably can't find, but there it is, right underneath it, 146. Okay, I can do this. I'm technologically tall. 
All right, now, so that was, but my short term memory is going for what? Uh, 146. 146. Who's got a calculator for me? 4 times 463 plus 2 times 146. Okay, so we have 1,852 plus... Uh, so 2,144, collectively. Because I can do numbers in my head pretty fast. And also, uh, Mr. Sutter gave me the calculator. Okay, 2,144. All right, I'm not that amazing. Okay, now, what does that represent, party people? Right, I'm going to write it right here because I can do that. Two, let me get rid of this doohickey here. Okay, this is two, one, four, four kilojoules. Yes, now notice we were, that's why we times it by two here and times it by four. Now listen, you, you, don't, you can leave it out right now. So this arrow up is two, one, four, four. What's the arrow down? Well, we have how many whole bonds over here? All together though. Right, there's one hoe here, another hoe here, two times two hoes is four hoes. Well, there's ho hoes, isn't there? Is a Nestle ho ho thing? I don't know what you guys are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, let's move on, please. Now, oxygen bonds to another oxygen by a double bond. So let's go look on the table. It's a special U bond. And they, they don't show it a double bond. Oops. It's, it's right here, 495. Where it says, they don't show oxygen with a double bond. They should, but they don't. So that's 495. We're going to learn why oxygen is a double bond. So that's 495. Okay. And as people are already quickly finding the numbers for me. Okay. We're going to move 495. And you're going to find that arrow down. I should change the ink because I can. And... Uh, doing the numbers quickly in my head, it's 2842. 20, I can't write or remember numbers. Okay, so this is 20. So I take 4 times 463 plus 495. That gives me a grand total. Again, this is doing what? We're forming bonds right here, right? I think I made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, hold on, my brain is recalculating. Okay, I'm sorry. That's, uh, yeah, I didn't carry one in my head. Two, three, four, seven. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, assistants always make you look good. All right, any case. So you notice something. This number represents what? Breaking bonds, right? So this is the arrow down. We're getting stable. Two, three, four, seven. Yeah, because, I'm sorry, forming bonds. Bad Grodzki. Thank you for correcting me. You saved my video. Okay, so this is forming bonds. And I don't have that when I do that by myself. So and this is breaking bonds. We need energy to break bonds, right? And we energy is released. So what's the difference? That's why you subtract those two numbers. Who's the bigger number? Right, so when I subtract this in my head, um, let me think. I'm carrying that. 7, 4 is a 3. I get it. 203. Now, it's a negative 203. Overall, this is going down. And we say that delta H, enthalpy, heat of reaction, is negative 203, which tell that's right, kilojoules. We'll just do total kilojoules. No, you don't need the kilojoules per mole here. All right, now, we just proved that the reaction that we just saw, okay, was exothermic mathematically. Your work of home is to complete this page, okay, the back page is totally optional. I'll show you that. The key is on the drive of shared. Have a great day. Want to hear yourself and listen to this again. It'll be online tonight. Okay. Are you like that?